Hi, I'm Captain Grant Coppin with Texas Fishing Tips, and this is your weekly fishing report. Hey guys, just wanted to say, you know, welcome. Here we are over here, just on the south side of the causeway. Um, been a while since I've done a report, but I'm ready to let y'all know where the fish are. Over here on Laguna Shores, we've been catching good boxes of mixed redfish, drum, and trout. Uh, a little bit heavy on the trout and reds. Uh, not very many uh, good keeper trout, but you know, they're still catching lots of numbers. Uh, and ever since the 29th, you know, you can keep 15 inch trout now. So uh, that's, that's a good thing. We'll be able to have uh, more variety in our boxes. Um, getting a few flounders, starting to see some of the flounder move around the piers. So when I'm flounder fishing, after I've done my drifting, I'll come up in here and, and fish around all the structure, all these little piers and uh, little islands and stuff, throwing popping corks and live shrimp, just letting the cork drift up against the structure and uh, catching some nice flounder. Um, when I can get a hold of some small finger mullet or small mud minnows, been catching some flounder doing that. Uh, and then also picking up some redfish doing that. You know, I'll be sitting there waiting for that thump of flounder. And instead of flounder, redfish just grab a hold of it because they're moving through here. And it's almost that time for uh, the redfish to just be in mad chaos. Um, we haven't had too many cold fronts. We've had some north wind blowing, but it hasn't changed the temperature that much. And that's really what we're waiting on. But I come in here on Laguna Shores, sit down, work these uh, potholes around the piers, fish that structure, and you'll get a good mixed bag of drum reds and trout. Over here in the ICW, just south of the causeway, I saw something really cool the other day. Looked like a little patch of pumpkins coming down the ditch. Look for these to be more common every day, especially on those days that are calm. You know, water's moving down the ICW, so are those redfish. They're moving with the bait. Now the tide's up a little bit, but uh, we're still catching fish in the ditch even though the tide is up. Normally, whenever the tide gets high, I don't like to fish the ditch. The ditch is holding fish. It's holding fish. It's holding bait. And uh, really, I'm just looking for the bird activity, looking for the fish activity, looking for those little patches of pumpkins. Just Most of them are oversized, of course, but man, is it fun. You can throw just about anything in them. Uh, don't even have to get bait. Just throw a lure, throw a spoon, throw uh, just a quarter ounce jig head with a plastic, you know, just so you can put it right on them. You know, if it lands in the school, you're catching a fish. And hang on because it's usually a big bull red. Um, over here on the edge, both east and west sides, we've been catching some black drum. Been catching um, some flounder on those sandy spots. Uh, you know, right on the edge of the ICW, it gets real shallow. And when the tide gets up, those fish will get on the edge of the ICW and get right on the bar um, that most people just jump over. And this spot right here is really good. Those fish will move not down the ditch, but on the edge of the ditch. And you'll catch some good fish up in here. Throw a live finger mullet in there or just reel a spoon or a soft plastic through that uh, shallow water. And you'll catch a good mixed bag of fish. Down here on the King Ranch, and with that tied up, these back lakes are filling up with water, uh, also filling up with bait. So what I've been doing is on the windy days, which this week is going to be windy, and we're going to have some weather. Get up as tight as you can to the shoreline, throw those baits way back in those back lakes, because of course my boat doesn't get way back there, but those fish are back there. You can see them blowing up on bait, uh, cut mullet, cut skipjack cut Manhattan all back in the mouths and in the back of the lakes if you can reach them uh, just as as shallow as your boat will float even the skinny boats get back in here put the trolling motor down move down you know let let 15 20 minutes go by if you don't have a fish just move down the shoreline a couple hundred yards and set right back down on another back lake or drain and you'll put a good box of redfish because you're gonna go uh, maybe a couple hundred yards, maybe even four or five hundred yards, and maybe not catch anything. 
but then you're going to hit one of these little back lakes that's just going to be loaded with fish because they're starting to school up and these um, these redfish are on the move. So if you catch them in one back lake one day, don't expect for them just to be sitting there ready for you the next morning. I've experienced that plenty of times over here. I just got to hit them, move down, hit them, move down each one. Sometimes I'll hit two or three in a row that are loaded with fish. Sometimes I'll go two or three in a row that don't have any. But if you keep on and be methodical about it, throw those live finger mullet back in these things, you'll see some real cool redfish action. Down here on the south shore of Baffin, you know, the tide's up. And when the tide gets up this time of year, finding good fish on this uh flat uh, earlier there weren't as many fish on the flat because the tide hadn't come up enough now it's up enough to get on the flat and bait gets up here the fish get up here uh, when the tide drops look for them to be right on the edge right on the drop off uh, drum and redfish both not very many trout but occasional good trout in here um, some of these deeper rocks are holding more of the trout um, but with the tide up i would focus more up in the flat um, both on gold spoons, soft plastics, and uh, just live shrimp under a popping cork. Over here on the inside of East Clayburg Point along this shoreline, we've been catching good redfish, a lot of bull reds, a um, few slot reds. Uh, most of these reds have been oversized. I just come in here and throw cut bait, usually on a southeast wind. And like I said, this week's going to be windy. The tide is up. The fish are tight to the shore they're moving they're heading down this shoreline so once you come around this corner here just get up tight to the shore throw cut bait uh mullet manhaden uh skipjacks and you'll get a good box of fish you'll have a lot of good action and you know take the kids down here let them pull on some bull reds keep a few for dinner uh keep a few slots for dinner a little bit further down towards starvation, been seeing some drum over here. Of course, as you get closer to the tip, you know, you're going to have to deal with that wind. So I, I have been staying anywhere from about right here all the way to the uh, point because with that southeast wind, once I tuck around this corner, I'm up kind of protected away from that strong wind. And I usually run uh, right here. You come around that pier and you can run all the way down the inside of the tide gauge um, you know this is all protected even when it's blowing 30 40 miles an hour you know I can just run nice and protected down the back side here and just come out right at the end of the tide gauge um, right about right here I'll shut down or maybe sometimes just come right around uh, the tip of the pier shut down right there and trim the motor up get up tight to the shore and start throwing that cut bait uh, usually find some real good fish in here. I'm Captain Grant Coppin. Thanks for watching.